you know, people save up holidays to do what I do for a living. I feel very privileged to be doing what I'm doing. Driving out in the bush, camping, and it's not just the camping and the full driving, it's also uh, the photography and the videography, because that's, that's my other passion for what I'm doing. The whole YouTube channel and everything that I do all started with, back in the day, we're doing loads of trips, you know, saving up our holidays, heading out there. I was self-employed, so I was a bit lucky to be able to go whenever I wanted to. So with the birth of my first daughter, I bought a, a little crappy Canon Handycam, and that I brought with me on all these trips that we did with the boys. And just started doing little videos of river crossings, you know, climbing up hills, just all that cool stuff. And then just, just like, just all the action moments. And then I started cut, cutting and pasting it into like a bit of a video. Skills are very limited back then, I was just learning. And I wasn't trying to do anything professional. It just ended up on YouTube so we could all watch it. And after that, it's on a public forum. I didn't really think about that. And people started asking questions, uh, asking how we got there and what, what we're using and how, how do you find this product and that product. And all of a sudden, I started answering questions by making more content, more videos, and it just blew up from there. Hi folks, in this video, we're gonna talk about why we all want bigger tires on our four-wheel drives. Hi, I'm Ronnie from Four Wheeling. And then three years later, I saw there was a chance to do this as full-time, and, and here we are. So my passion for the outdoors started when I was very young, uh, you know, just being a kid and I lived half my childhood in Denmark, Scandinavia and the other half in Australia. So I kind of had opportunity to have the best of both worlds, you know, cold climate snow and, you know, hot bush stuff here, more freedom in Australia because there's, you know, there's more space here. Uh, in Denmark was very like Boy Scouts kind of thing. So you join like a Scouts group and you learn how to use your knives, you learn how to cook stuff like kind of like a forest tucker not like bush tucker because they don't have bush there but um that's where passion for outdoors started i've always sort of been an outdoorsy person um, and then but to get into the full driving thing it all started with two-wheel drives not four-wheel drives so i used to have an xd falcon uh many falcons actually uh, so me and the wife used to used to travel in a falcon used to camp out of the falcon with a 30 dollar kmart tent and that's where the whole camping and fishing side started. Let's not talk about fishing because I'm, I'm a crap fisherman, but anyway, we try. So my first vehicles, as I mentioned earlier, my first vehicles were two-wheel drives, uh, mainly Falcons. My favorite was the XD Falcon. But then when I started you know, requiring four-wheel drives, more for work purposes really, so I bought a uh, 2.4 litre gutless petrol Ford Courier. And this thing, it was a bit of a good bush hack though. It was really super light. It was so light and it was a dual cab. And that's the vehicle I first learned about tire pressure in it. I was bogged in, um, I was bogged up a Lancelin in this thing and a bloke swings around in a big F250 and asked me what tire pressure I'm running and I just looked at him with a blank face. Go, what do you mean? And that's where I learned tire pressure. So that's, we're talking over 20 years ago. And uh, after I kicked around in that vehicle for quite some time, um, uh, made a name for myself in the construction industry, made some money, bought my Hilux straight from the dealership and over the course of seven years that got built up to, to like a machine similar to the 70 I've got these days. Unfortunately I had to sell it because we had an expanding family, it was an extra cab and uh, but I did a lot in that Hilux. The Hilux was awesome. So many trips in it and that's where everything started was from that Hilux and then came the 70 series. So I was initially looking at buying an 80 series and it's going to keep it as a wagon I was, I was going to drop like a I was actually considering the five, a 6.5 litre Brunswick diesel um, I even considered an LS conversion but then the 70 series dual cab V8 got released and then I just started saving up and about a year later almost to the day of the release I ended up buying it straight out of the dealership and here it is today six years later and uh, it's gone from being light to overweight to light again. Is there anything after the cruiser? Yeah, I think there'll be another cruiser. I'm not selling my current cruiser. There's no way I'm selling that. Um, if I've got anything to do with it, I'm keeping it. And if I do get something else in the near future, which I am planning to, then I'm gonna be running two vehicles. So possibly I'll send one interstate and I'll keep one in WA and I might do a swapsies a bit later on, but uh, 
I'm waiting to see what Toyota do with the 300 series, um, but there are a few other options I'm looking at as well. The, the Ram is kind of tickling my fancy, the, the 2500, not the 1500, the 2500. That would be a cool machine to, to do up and um, maybe, maybe get a, borrow a caravan, do a couple of trips with the whole family with the caravan, but uh, mainly it'll be off-road trailers and, and what I normally do. A lot of people ask me, how do you make or create a successful YouTube channel? It is a lot of hard work, dedication, um, repetition. You have to really put all your energy and effort into it. So most people like myself and, and a lot of other YouTubers, they all started with having a job at the same time as a YouTube channel. So you have to learn how to juggle two things and you have to use all your spare time up to, to basically invest in this channel. So I used to play a lot of video games on the PS, PS4 and stuff like that. I haven't touched one for three years and I used to be a big gamer apart from being outdoors. That was my indoor thing. Now I just edit all the time. So my number one tip would be, be yourself and find a niche. Don't just start a, another, for example, full drive adventure channel because there are so many out there already. Uh, take Sam Isles, for example, you're watching his video on his channel right now. He has, he has his own niche, he has his own thing. It's very different to everyone else. And that, that is why, that is, well, it's not the sole reason why he is a, growing a successful channel, um, but it's one of the reasons. So if you try and do the same as what everyone else does, you're gonna be fishing around, you're gonna be a little fish swinging around with a big fish and you're not gonna get seen. So my number one tip is to find your own niche and find your own style and do something different. Let's set the scene for my perfect or preferred style of camping without filming. And that will be with the family. It'll be somewhere where, where there's fresh water and the ocean at the same time, so you can get best of both worlds. And um, somewhere, somewhere nice, remote, but just spectacular, beautiful, with seawater and fresh water. There are a few places around, and I'm not gonna give those away. But at the end of the day, as long as I'm sitting in that Land Cruiser with a full tank of diesel, and I've got a destination that I'm heading to, and I'm cruising down the beach, down a gravel track, or down some back road somewhere, that, is when I live the moment and I'm in my elements. Take two. Here's a sneak peek at part two where Ronnie takes on our four challenges. Is that the it's really bad. <laughs> he's, he's calling me. Hello? Let's give him a boost. Give yeah, him a boost, mate. I don't know if that's going to help you, mate. I'm smashing times here. Woo! Smell that clutch. Yeah, I also smell a lot of clutch. Driver error. Driver error? I think that's all it's got. I'm snapping an axle on my takeoff. I'll make sure not a <laughs> drop gets out of it. 63 litres per 100. What happened there? That shit's not bad. Please click the button to your left if you want to go and check out the latest merchandise we have on our website. If you missed last week's episode, click down below to see it. And most importantly, on the far left, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.